AKA Honey Hands, and today I got a very special video. I'm gonna be making a German classic. A fried pork chop with some spetzel and some red cabbage. Mmm, yummy! I have some beautiful looking pork chops here. Bacon, because we're gonna be topping our fried pork chop with a bacon gravy. Say that again, bacon gravy. Our red cabbage is gonna be super simple just with a little bit of white sugar. I have some applesauce here and red wine. It's gonna cook down into something delicious. To be served with our fried pork chop, our bacon gravy, and our red cabbage is gonna be spetzel. And it's very simple to make. All you need for your spetzel, it's very simple to make. All you need for your spetzel, all purpose flour, some eggs, and a little bit of milk, and for seasonings today, we got the trusty salt pepper, some nutmeg, some white pepper, and some garlic and onion. Let's get started. First step, what takes the longest? Our red cabbage is gonna be about 30 to 40 minutes cooking. Boom, let's go ahead and take that stem off. Stand it on its flat base. Go right in half with it. And we're gonna go into a quarter. Cut that half in half. And now I turn it sideways and just thinly shave both halves at the same time if you feel comfortable. If not, one at a time works good too. Whatever is good for you, onto the other half. Cut it in half and same deal. We're just gonna shave all the way down. Save yourselves a little bit of time. Pull your cutting board hanging off the edge of your counter. Bring over your pan and just throw it all in there. It looks like a lot in the pan right now. Put in our liquids, our white vinegar, and our red wine. I have it on a medium low heat. Throw a lid on it and just let it steam and it'll cook down very much. Here are my white peppercorns. A white peppercorn is the same thing as a black peppercorn except it's fully matured. I have a very hot pan here as you can see. There's smoke coming off of it. And I'm just gonna throw in my white peppercorns and I'm gonna keep them moving because you don't want them to burn. You can do this over a gentle heat or you can just pull your hot pan right off the heat. If I let them sit for too long, they'll burn since the pan is very hot. So that's why we keep them moving. And now right into my pestle and mortar and I'm gonna crush them and get nice fresh white pepper. White pepper is an excellent seasoning for spetzel. And when you're getting the whole spice, instead of buying it pre-ground and then you toast it yourself fresh and you grind it, the flavor and the smell are always going to be so much better than anything pre-ground. The smell is so good. It's very aromatic and it's filling up my kitchen with the most beautiful odor. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Hold on. It smells so good it's filling up my kitchen with the most wonderful smell. Little tiny steps like this one are the difference between a regular meal and an extraordinary meal. Now it's time for our spetzel, our German egg pasta. We're gonna need a couple of ingredients. We have some eggs, some milk, and some all-purpose flour, along with our seasonings. So I start in my bowl with four eggs, two cups of flour, and a half a cup of milk. You want your milk on standby, because if it's looking too thick, you just add a little more milk. And we're gonna keep adding milk until we reach our desired consistency. This is looking good, we're almost there. That's what's great about cooking, it gives you time to adjust and adapt. I'd say that's good. But of course, as always, we're gonna give it a test cook just to make sure. And now it's time to season. You're gonna want a generous amount of salt. You can always salt it after too, so don't go crazy. Here's our freshly ground white pepper. And you don't wanna to go too heavy handed with this because white pepper is very strong. And like I said, you can always season at the end. A little pinch of nutmeg, about a teaspoon. The cabbage has definitely steamed down. There's a lot more space in the pan, so now it's time to add the rest of our ingredients. Here I have a cup and a half of white sugar, one cup of applesauce, and now all that's left, 
just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt to season. Mix it all up. Return the lid and let it cook on a low heat for about 20 more minutes. I'm putting the spetzel in the fridge to stay cool until we're ready to use it. And now I'm gonna start working on the bacon gravy. Here's six slices of thick cut bacon. Slice all the way down the line. Not too thick, not too thin. This is gonna make a bacon gravy. And if you've never had that, prepare to have your mind blown. Take the chopped bacon and render off the fat and let your bacon get nice and crispy. Our cabbage is cooking down really nice. It's looking perfect. It's tasting perfect. Our bacon, nice and crispy. To that, we'll add a small amount of diced white onion and garlic as well. Mixy, mixy. And give that a few minutes for the onions and the garlic to cook down and become soft. So the cabbage is done based upon preference, how crunchy or soft you like it. If you like it extra soft, cook it a little longer. If you like it a little firm like I do, now is the perfect time to end it. Our onions, garlic, and bacon have all been cooking for a little while. Add a little bit of white all-purpose flour. So you need as much flour as you have fat. And I just estimated it's about a third of a cup. If you add some oil, if you add some butter, you're gonna need a little bit more flour. So that's gonna thicken up our onion, garlic, and bacon mixture. And just let that cook for a couple minutes and cook out the flour. Once the bacon and the flour have cooked for a little bit longer, add some whole milk to it. And we're gonna bring that to a boil so the flour will thicken it up into a nice good bacon gravy. Add bits of milk slowly at a time and you definitely need to make sure that it comes to a boil before you add any more flour because it's not gonna thicken up until then. So you can keep adding flour, keep adding flour and saying, why isn't it thickening? And then as soon as it does thicken, you just have a big glob. It's happened to me many times, so learn from my mistakes. You can see it's a little too thick. Perfect time, just get a little bit more milk in there. While it's getting to the desired consistency, we're gonna season some black pepper, freshly ground black pepper, salt to taste, and a little pinch of garlic powder, a little pinch of onion powder. And that's gonna give you a super yummy, yummy gravy. If anybody is familiar with a sausage gravy, like for breakfast, you know, like sausage gravy and biscuits, this is exactly like that. You only would change that one ingredient, which protein you use. You definitely want the gravy to be nice and thick and rich, but not too thick. We don't need any glue paste or anything like that. So like normal, we're gonna look for the nappe consistency that I've explained to us before that will lightly coat the back of a spoon to know our gravy is the perfect consistency. All right, you guys know the deal. We've breaded a few things before. Some whole milk and an egg to make our egg wash. We're gonna do it a little bit differently than the last times because the last times we used the breadcrumb breading and this is gonna be a flour breading. So you're just gonna change the last step of the breadcrumbs for flour again. We're gonna go flour, egg wash, flour. And for that we need seasoned flour. I have all purpose flour and I'm gonna hit it with some onion, some garlic powder some black pepper, a hefty amount of salt. We wanna make sure our pork chops are well seasoned. And just a sprinkle of paprika, that gives us a nice color and a nice flavor too. Mix that all up. Into the seasoned flour, make sure it gets a good coating all the way around. And remember for breading things, dry hand, wet hand. Now we go egg wash, take over with the wet hand. Fully coated, and we come back to the flour with the dry hand. You wanna make sure you have a nice dry exterior. We don't want any liquid leaking through. A good coating of flour is gonna give us a delicious, crispy, crunchy, seasoned exterior. Boom, pork chop number one done, on to number two. This is a messy job, but you guys are gonna thank yourself. You're gonna say, I love getting dirty if it means my food is gonna taste this good. As our oil heats up, we're getting ready to fry them crispy. All right, it's time for spetzel. We have our nice spetzel batter here. It's thick and sticky, kind of like a, a bread might be. That's kind of what you're looking for. And now I have a slotted spoon with some 
holes in there. You need anything with holes about this size. A colander can work well, but this is how we shape our spetzel. So a big ladle right over the hot boiling water. And now push it down and just let the noodles drip through. And this is how we're going to get our spetzel noodles. Let your noodles drip. That Each one of those drops is forming its own noodle. And you can see all of our little noodles forming down there. You're going to let them boil for about four minutes until the flour is cooked and the egg is cooked. And then scoop them off the top. They float. Take your little scooper, fish out all your little noodles, and dump them right into a colander in your sink and run some cold water over them to stop the cooking process. Repeat this process until your batter is all gone. Take your rubber spatula. This tool really helps you pass it through the holes easily since it's flexible and able to conform to any wall. Once your noodles are soft and fully cooked, fish them out of there. In between batches of finishing up your spetzel dough, you can take your breaded pork chop and put it into some nice hot oil on a medium to high heat. Make sure that the oil comes up at least halfway on the pork chop so that when you flip it over, it'll be fully cooked. Once the flour coating on the pork chop is starting to look brown and crispy, you flip it over, you check it. Maybe this one needs a minute or two more, but that one is perfect and you just let them stay in there until it's nice and golden brown and delicious. There's nothing better than a fried pork chop with some bacon gravy. I gave it another minute or two. I'll flip it over and boom, looking perfect. When your pork chops are nice and golden brown and crispy, remove them from the oil and put them on a wire rack so the oil can drip and drain. This breading is nice and crispy, well seasoned, and it looks perfect. And right after you pull it out of the hot oil, just a slight salting. As you can see, our spetzel turned out perfect. Nice, individual, little unique strands, each one a little different, just like a snowflake. Here's the final step to our meal, the piece de resistance. In a hot saute pan, melt a little bit of butter. Throw in some of your spetzel. Coat it in the butter, give it some fresh salt, and now you just let it sit there and get nice and crispy. Let it sit on a maximum heat like a steak, we're gonna sear it. And that enhances the flavor tremendously. Watch this. And we're just gonna do that a couple times. Let it get crispy, shake it up. Let it get crispy, shake it up. And in a couple of minutes, we're gonna have magic. But I got no right to tell me it's like you Let's check the crispiness. Oh yeah, look at that. We're on our way to Flavor Town, baby. That is finito. Time to plate up, people. Start off with a nice base of your crispy, delicious homemade spetzel. Now I love this stuff. I'm a big boy eater, so a big pile I get. A nice, thick, juicy, fried pork chop. A beautiful helping of braised red cabbage. The sweetness and the acidity is really gonna help cut the fat from the pork, from the bacon gravy. This is a great complement to the rest of the meal. Last but not least, I have our bacon gravy, which is just gonna go a little bit on the pork chop and all over the spetzel. You don't wanna put too much right on top of the pork chop or else it's gonna get soggy and we know we love that nice crispy breading. There it is, voila, the Chef Sawyer German special. We got our braised red cabbage, our spetzel, our fried pork chop, and our bacon gravy. That might not be German. I think I just put a little Chef Sawyer twist on it. But otherwise, a very authentic meal. There you have it. You too now possess the knowledge to make this at home. So do it. Just do it. Thank you everybody for coming back continuously week after week and enjoying Chef Sawyer Sunday. I love every single one of you. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys next week. Mwah. Cut.